Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Godsend movie thoughts. Briefly reflecting on the first two parts, the, the first two movies in this, you know, what I call the early 2000s is cloning scary genre film trilogy. First being The Sixth Day and the second being not Replicant, but Replicant. While Replicant is most definitely not a great film, it does have significant empathy for the clone. And, you know, The Sixth Day honestly, logically, and humanely goes into the ethical issues raised by cloning technology, which is a discussion we need to have as the technology is, you know, more or less there or right around the corner. And if we decide to use it, which is not a decision we should make lightly, it could have great benefits for mankind. Replicant is basically saying, you know, it's nurture, not nature, that, you know, if you clone a person who's done evil, it doesn't mean that the clone will do something evil. You know, either the, the in Replicant, either the clone does not have the predisposition to do evil or he never gives into it. And, you know, the, the clone having been cloned from a serial killer, either he doesn't have the killer instinct or it's just not really woken, but yeah, the, the movie does push it a bit far with Michael Rooker's character abusing the clone, expecting it to, you know, be evil. The, the twist here is this, you know, it just does not, before his eighth birthday, apparently Adam was, like, both Adam and Adam too were clearly very happy, children had happy childhoods, but there's no real, like, it's not like he keeps, you know, doing the same things or having the same memories as the first Adam. You know, they, they're actually, they're freaked out by Steggy. So when Zachary's memories suddenly take, take hold, yeah, you know, it's just, I, like, they, they say, you know, he's got the same smile and the same, you know, but that's... Yeah, it, there's no indication that he has the memories of the first Adam, so why are Zachary's memories suddenly, yeah, able to just, yeah. Why are they woke and why do they have any impact at all? As one reviewer has no, at least has noted, rather than engaging the dilemmas surrounding the issue, the, this movie is content to say that cloning is dangerous by making the clone Adam a murderous psychopath. And, you know, it's not that cloning necessarily is bad, it's that cloning by bad people is bad. And, you know, you could apply that to any you know, if if you do something wrong, it's wrong. That doesn't mean that the, you know, that, yeah, it's just, it, it really doesn't work. Near the end, when they're at the church, in the church, finally we have a debate about the right and wrong of cloning, and it feels so forced in. It feels like, like a studio note or something, like, you know, at, 
uh, an exec was going through the script and like spat out his coffee when he got to the end and there was not a single debate about the right and wrong floating because they don't really like they have one character say it's wrong and another character say but I really want to do it you know it's there's really not much of a debate before the end there and then you know oh I gave you everything you had like if it wasn't for the clone he wouldn't have given them anything at all it's just yeah and I guess you know Paul did earlier mention you know there has to be a limit to how grateful we are yeah and you know the the idea is that the Adam to past age eight you know that's when Zachary Zachary's soul let's go with that takes over you know starts threatening to take over at least and that soul is evil you know I mean they do even explain why he you know like they you know the the bully the bullying children but then you know, oh, the moment that he starts doing something, you know, oh, then he's just evil. So, I guess technically he wasn't born evil, but he turned, but then, you know, yeah, once he's evil, regardless of whose body he's in or how many of his cells are there, he's just plain evil. And, yeah, you know, the... The, the idea is that, you know, the, the, the pseudoscientific theory of cellular memory, of like transplants having strong memories from the person they were transplanted from, which, you know, if they were this powerful, that sure would be news to the vast majority of people who's had transplants. Beyond using the tragedy of losing one's child in the forest or otherwise, I really hate that this movie uses cloning to scare people. And I say use rather than explore, because this really isn't a movie that explores cloning that falls into the genre of horror thriller. It's a horror thriller that happens to use cloning. You know, it's it's just typical moralizing fear-mongering garbage it's like okay we get it you think that this is a really bad thing you know now can we talk about the potential benefits and would you mind not lying so blatantly about it can we have a calm rational debate about the actual issue if this movie had been made in the 50s, it would have been about gays. If it was made in the 70s, it would have been about drugs. You know, it's just, it's people who aren't comfortable with this particular thing. It reminds me of the, the recent, you know, Louis Gomer went from, you know, let's put gay people on an island, see if they... You know, if they can't reproduce, then, you know, now he's, like, saying, oh, well, I just watched a movie, and now I can't stop thinking about what if gays were on, you know, a space, you know, went out into space trying to colonize, and, you know, yeah, it's just, this, this, thing, I, I can't wrap my head around it, and it, it makes me uncomfortable, so, like, there are there are ethical issues about cloning, but this doesn't raise them. And, you know, not only does it use cloning, it cooks up this scenario that would never happen. This is not about what if you clone someone you lost back to life. It's what if your doctor tried to bring his own son back you know, through your child. Why doesn't Wells just find a donor couple 
who would willingly give him the boy afterwards. You know, I guess there, the idea here is that, oh, he tried to steal the kid, and, you know, he spends as much time with the kid as he can. But, yeah, like, they, you know, I, I suppose if, if they willingly gave him the kid afterwards, then, you know, where's, where's the story? Where's the conflict? But maybe they could then run off with the kid, you know, even though he had planned, and then they could start to realize that something had gone wrong, you know. I do believe that's that would make a better movie, although it wouldn't have the you cloned your dead son back to life element. I wonder if the writer and director of this are aware that there are countless donors of both egg and sperm. You know, you, you don't have to, you know, you can pay people to, you know, there, there, are, there are women that you can pay to, you know, have a baby and then you you know, yeah, then you take it over, the, you know, you adopt it immediately after it's been born. This is, this is a thing that happens. The... There are other films that have this same kind of thing of like, you know, someone being genetically evil, a child having evil genes. But in those, it comes from a much more natural place. Here, it is literally forced into the story the way that, you know, Richard forces Zachary into Adam's genes, you know, it just, yeah, like, it, you can make a movie that scares people about cloning, and you can make a movie that says that this, you know, this child is genetically evil, but you can't make both the way this tries to make both because clearly you know these are good parents and this is a happy home life and it's that kind of story of you know happy home life but then suddenly the kid is evil and for that kind of story yeah I don't want to spoil the other stories but yeah using using cloning just having them clone their own child who was good, cloning a good child, and then the ch the good child turning out to be evil. Yeah, it it just doesn't the the you know the the script contorts itself in order to work in those different elements. And it's clearly saying. If you clone some, if you clone a loved one back to life, they wouldn't be the same, or it, you know, there would be something wrong. But then, it being Zachary's DNA, yeah, just makes it completely ridiculous. At the very start, Paul is attempted mugged, but one of the two kids who are mugging him knows him and he's he's alright he's the best teacher I ever had and then they let him go he, he even apologizes for it this is totally a thing that would happen in the real world he even snarks at the kid if we're just even if we're just talking about it from a from a filmmaking perspective that was set up that doesn't pay off it's it's the first example of the film setting something up and not paying it off. The way the, the scene is set up, you have to have like a rescue or 
he fights back. Or something. We just saw a switchblade. You know, maybe he throws a punch and it intimidates them enough. Maybe he manages to knock the knife out of his hand and they run off. Maybe a cop or a good Samaritan notices and yells at them, you know, ye yells, stop that, and then they run off scared or something. But, yeah. Adam 2 genuinely drowning the bully kid, like... Again, I don't want to spoil, but this is this is the actual exact same thing as in at least one of the other stories. They they just they went into this with no attempt to make to to be you know creative in in any way to to come up with their own yeah. The nanny explains he you know he set fire to the house and then he went upstairs to continue playing. Suggesting he hadn't really grasped, grasped what fire does. And I, why was it that Zachary and then Adam to try, you know, Zachary did and Adam to attempted to murder their own mother? Like, I feel like that might be the movie actually pushing it a little too far. It's like... Again, avoiding spoilers, other stories that go in, you know, that, that cover some of the same territory don't, you know, don't actually go that far. We genuinely start with the kid dying in an accident and then you know at the end and we were almost there earlier the kid attempts to murder his own mother like as a brief comparison everybody knows this and it's not a spoiler since it's the first thing that happens in the movie in the original Halloween we first see Michael Myers kill his older sister and he's just a kid the rest of the movie we're scared of when Michael Myers now an adult will kill again that is a way you can do this kind of thing you know the moment that because there's no we don't see Michael innocent we only the first thing the first thing you see a character do is the it really shapes how you see that character. And the first thing we see Michael Myers do at age, I want to say six, it's been forever since I watched it, is kill, kill a family member even, his sister, you know. So it's like if at six he was willing to kill his older sister, you know, how, how messed up is he now? How, you know, is he, yeah, that is how you create this kind of, you know, they were, they were dangerous, they were a dangerous child, and yeah. But, yeah, the, the, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, speaking abstractly, speaking about fiction, fictive, fictitious stories, if you have adults murder a child, even their own, that's going very far, but you can maybe, you know, maybe make it work, especially if it's like that that's the only way they can see to stop the child from killing somebody else. You know, that angle can, yeah, but the, the kid killing its own parents, you know, especially when the first thing we, you know, he's so innocent when we first see Adam, and yeah, it's it's just, it's it's, it's a, a huge leap from the, also, again, you know, when when the kid kills the, the bully, you know, that's 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 not as much of a leap. That's just showing that there's something 
wrong and we you know we can see how it connects to the you know then the nightmares there are these bully kids and then you know suddenly they're like you know they're being they're they're dying and then you know adam 2 kills a bully kid and then you know we can we can see how that goes together and yeah again like i i guess the the reason they actually just briefly in some of the alternate endings they actually do try to kill Adam too but otherwise they're remarkably forgiving like we know he killed at least one kid and he you know they're at the end he's just barely stopped from killing his mother and yeah you know after that, it's just that's that's the thing. There isn't an alternate. I, I'm almost certain it's now. I watched them about a week ago, but I'm almost certain there's no none of the five endings of this had the kid die. There, there's at least one where it looks like he has, but each of them, it's supposed to basically be. But then you know now it's okay. Which also, how? What what made it okay? We know that it's what went wrong is that Adam 2 has some of Zack's DNA. So, like, yeah, in, in that instance, what do you do? How would you, like, do you go to another geneticist, explain it to him, and before you're hauled off to jail, you try to convince him to try to extract Zachary's DNA somehow, which, you know, the... the the, the movie is set today, the, you know, again, the, the first two parts of the trilogy were set in the future, although not in his own, the distant future. Yeah, it's, it's, and, and when you've made, you literally, over the course of the film, Adam 2 kills at least one person. And it's not in self-defense. It's, you know, the, the, the bully, like, he threatens people and you know he but he doesn't do anything that is like yeah com compared to that that makes it that makes us really you know like or you might like think ah oh, that bully I wish you know I wish they didn't exist or something but there's there's no you know nothing that the bully ever does makes it even remotely okay for them to be killed and it clearly is like yeah so and and that's like some of the you know and Zachary too went too far but you can understand there's no basis for Adam Adam too going that far Zachary was bullied for a while and then he like snapped and you know the movie then pushes the idea but then he's just evil you know I would I would say that there's probably there's well you know if he didn't burn himself to death there's a chance that you know if you know medication or treatment some you know other or other treatment something that could you know, yeah, but yeah, you know, Adam too kills because Zachary killed, and the yeah, the I suppose that was about what I wanted to say. But yeah, yeah. The you know the movie goes that far. The movie has him kill at least one person, and then it doesn't kill him at the end, which again is different from what it what you might compare it to. And yeah, the the fact that there is yeah. I, yeah, I think I've made my point on that. Why is Jesse so careless in the cabin? It's clear that Adam 2 is at least dangerous, that there's something like, 
in the actual theatrical ending, he doesn't lock her in the dark room, but he did, you know, or, you know, much less do something there to try to kill her, but, you know, clearly there's something wrong, and you realize that he hasn't been himself lately, he's been someone else, so, yeah. Why doesn't she call Paul? We see that he has a cell phone, he calls from the car, you know, and it makes sense that he did. It's, it's, I want to say 2004 is when it came out. Yeah, like, I mean, people had cell phones back then. You know, even back then, in the distant past. You know, I suppose the reason is that, you know, if she wasn't so careless, how could a woman be saved by a man at the last second? And, yeah, you know, with why does... Adam 2 and Zachary, why does Adam 2 try and, and Zachary manage to kill his own mother? You know, with the bully, there was, again, I, I don't know, maybe I missed some, like, suggestion or some little bit of dialogue that it explains it, but it seems like it's just that, you know, it's there to make sure that we hate Zachary, that we don't have any sympathy for him left, you know, because torching the school, leading to the brutal deaths of several children. Bullies, yes, but still, that just isn't enough, you know, but, you know, and, and then the movie doesn't actually kill, you know, Adam too. He's not, like, yeah, I'm almost certain none of the endings had, like, like, I don't know if you could have, you know, if if Adam 2 died, if they could move again, you know, in some of the endings they do move another time, you know, if they could then have, like, some other geneticist, maybe not Richard again, you know, get him to, you know, impregnate her with the with Adam's cells again, and then only Adam's cells, and see if that didn't turn out well, you know, then, again, then you would actually have the point, then you could have, like, the ending with this kind of ominous, like, you know, you pan to the parents, and they're holding each other, and they've got, like, you know, they, they share a glance, they look into each other, and there's this, you know, chilling realization, you know, they're gonna keep doing this until one of them works out, you know, that is your scary, you know, cloning twist kind of thing on, you know, these parents have just, they were so bereft with, you know, they, they just, bereft, they, they were so, you know, the, their, their grief drove them to this madness of just cloning the kid over and over until it works out, and then, you know, again, eighth birthday, and, you know, this, this time, yes, this time, you know, there you go, but, no, it's, yeah, the, you know, one of them has him at his ninth birthday, you know, with the implication that nothing bad has happened between the two, I guess, so, yeah, Zachary went out just by, yeah, anyway, yeah, you know, Adam 2 doesn't die in a single ending, not even from not being saved, the way Paul does in one of the endings, you know, Jesse very nearly does in every ending, you know, that one of the endings, Adam 2 kills Richard. I, you know, again, there's, a, to be fair, with that, you do have the self-defense, defense. defense. You know, in, in that instance, you do actually have, you know, if he hadn't killed Richard, Richard would have killed him. You know, it's still pretty messed up, but, yeah. The... You know, the, at, at, I, I believe it's fairly late 
in the movie, you know, Adam too says that he knows something. It, don't tell them why he wants to buy a coffin. That's that's all. Why is Jesse so easily manipulated by Richard? Like it's there's there's just nothing. She's you know. Yeah, I mean he's barely even trying. He's just saying the things that he wants her to think, and then she thinks them. I don't know what did he put something in that wine? Did he like? Is there is there a Cosby situation or? Yeah, the when they're like driving, you know, and and then Adam starts having these dreams, and then you know, yeah, basically Paul starts asking a question. You know, maybe he'll put words to it, and then Jesse says, "I don't want to do this." I I guess they're doing. They're trying. He's trying to do what they did at you know at Richards with the you know she seemed fine with it there and I suppose was that a scene that was like left over was the the thing with him with Paul asking Adam to put words to his nightmares was that there before they realized that they could get Robert De Niro to do a scene where Adam could put words to because those those two scenes are the they're I mean I don't know maybe I missed something did the second scene accomplish something that the first didn't other than you know the indicating yet again that Paul is about as accident prone you know th that is clearly where the you know where Adam got being so accident prone. What does Wells gain? It, yeah, it's it's because they had Robert Dino. They wanted him to do more scenes. What would he possibly have to gain by Adam too putting words to his nightmares? He knew the. Why did it, why didn't he just pretend that something like that couldn't be done? There's no. You know, he says later in the church, oh, I just hope that a single element of Zachary would still be alive. What did you think that the nightmares were? You know, and it's just, it makes it so much easier to realize that, like, you know, he's he's been saying, you know, oh, don't worry about these things. These things happen. Because if you investigate and you realize, then, you know, then you might see that I'm the one who had, you know, yeah. Every second that the nanny is on screen, I just want to tell her try, to, you know, you don't have to keep your eyes that wide. You look like you had the Ludovico treatment. Calm down. You know, it's, I, I get it, but just. It's it's what what is that thing with like in in the editing script for you know Mockingjay Part One? I can't open my eyes any wider. Won't someone please do something? It's yeah. And you know as Paul is talking to the nanny and he finds out that the kid is dangerous. Yeah, wanna warn your wife. You want to maybe, like, like earlier, she even checks, does, you know, did he leave me a message? And she's frustrated that he didn't. We know he has a cell phone. You know, is he just trying not to break the flow of her compelling storytelling that, like, you know, you know what? Give me a sec. I just want to tell my wife that our kid might kill her. But, yeah. And the, you know... Both when she's in the dark room and the cabin, Jessie has apparently lost her senses because she can neither hear nor see the the clear like we can very easily tell that that's Adam. He's right there, you know. She passes him right. It's it's yeah. 
like and this is she's actually looking for him so it's not like like usually when a horror movie has a character you know going in to investigate strange noise in this place that you should never go kind of thing you know the character doesn't know that there's a killing you know that that there's someone out there who's killing people you know she literally she's she knows that there's a kid killing people I mean, did she did she not accept? It's it's pretty clear that it's I suppose well Paul knows for sure that the the bully kid was anyway, wouldn't she at least be a little more careful? And you know, yeah, she knows that he might have killed and she's looking specifically for him. So why does she just walk ahead? Like it's like she just got like what what do they call with, with horses? Do they call it blinders? You know she's just she refuses to look to the she has no respect, no respect for the sides. The 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 periphery can go screw itself. She will not even give it a glance. And as we find out in the church, evidently Zach's you know pyro tendencies stem from his father, you know, because the, he just leaves Paul to, to burn there as well. And it's also like, Paul doesn't even seem to notice that he knocks over a candle. I get that he's upset. I get that he's like frustrated. But you're in, you, you're in a wooden building. There are lit candles. And like, there's, there's no... And he doesn't even notice that he knocks one down. He doesn't even, he's not even careful to avoid, I don't know, maybe it's one of those magic cans, candles from the attic in there in the Matrix that don't set fire to anything. And the, you know, the nanny attacking, the, the you know, what I like to call the tub attack. You know, that does explain why, you know, why Zach, well, you know, Zachary tried to attack there. It's the Zach attack. It's, you know, and, you know, you, you can understand why she wasn't able to finish it. And, yeah, I mean, she knew that the kid, would, like I said before, an adult who was willing to kill the murderer's kid to keep him from killing again. You know, that makes sense. And again, I feel like that should just have been that should basically have been it like hypothetically you know they they the endings are so similar how about a version where the nanny admits I killed Zachary I killed him in the tub and I walked away and I was so you know so so shattered by what I had just done that I, I must I must have accidentally knocked over a candle on my way out. And I heard later that the, the house burned to the ground. You you don't even necessarily have to have like I don't know, I guess you want the wife dead so that it's Richard alone, you know, maybe actually you know, even even with yeah, there you know, you can have her die and you know, maybe Maybe Zachary did kill her, and then he went to take a bath. Maybe the the nanny actually accidentally burned the the house with the mother alive in there. You know the 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 price of justice or something. She she did something she had to do, but it was like you know, or maybe the the wife maybe she killed herself after realizing that her son had burned to death, something like that. But then Zachary is you know okay so he kills the bully kid that makes sense he's he has kind of a thing with killing bullies although he he has you know gone from from fire to water so you know he he's working his way through all the elements i i can't wait to see how he kills someone with love and the you know, yeah, then then it's not this psycho who killed his own mother for some reason that is, you know, again, trying to kill his own mother. It's 
this, you know, I mean, he's still a killer, if, if that's what you need him to be, but, you know, then you have this kind of, you know, when he's trying to take over, he's just, you know, he's just trying to figure out where, where am I, what's going on, I, I, the last thing I remember was drowning, you know, that, that kind of, that, that is the thing, like, Zachary, I mean, it might as well be a flu or something, it, it doesn't have any real, like, it just, it temporarily takes him over at times, and then it drives him to kill people that Zachary kill. you know, it kill, kills the, he kills the bully because Zachary kills bullies, and then, you know, I mean, it's, there's no, like, when, when science fiction, when you have two, two minds in the same body, then one of the minds will, all, you know, like, the, the mind that was hidden, that takes over at times, will be, like, scared, and, like, where am I, and, you know, and that's, that's never the case, he just has nightmares where, ah, oh, man, those, those bullies, I sure am glad I burned them to death, and that, and that scares Adam, but there's no, like, indication that, that Zack is, like, confused by the fact that he's, in another body, that he's sharing that body with another mind, that, you know, and, and most of the time it seems like it is just Adam. He's not, he's not acting that differently that much of the time, it's just at times he's, like, really creepy and, like, yeah, it's just, like I say in the review, first draft. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.